all right so we got the 9750 combine moved over um gonna be doing some work to it got to get it ready for wheat and oats got yeah 30 or 40 acres of oats and wheat to take off not a lot but a little bit and it's kind of nice to be able to do a little bit of a trial run before we start into the fall so gonna gonna head over and tear into the variable drive and then also have a few other things back there we got to do and then we just got to get it cleaned it is uh pretty dusty right now so at one point we'll get it out and get it cleaned up but kind of filthy been sitting in the barn but uh at least it's undercover oh no we're missing a tire no, just kidding. We had to take that one off to get it in the building because it's so wide. Anyways, so I'm going to take this guard off. So I'm getting a bolt to do that right now. And we're going to tear this uh, variable drive apart. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure what happened. I'm hoping that uh, I can take the shivs off. And I, I've been told there's a keyway or something like that inside of there that uh, makes this thing drive. So anyways, we're going to be tearing that apart. See if we can get it to. We got to detention the belt for the variable drive and then uh see what we find when we open that up so all right guys so we are tearing apart the variable drive on the 9750 so um so the first thing is the reason why we're doing it is um this sh shiv with the other one on here should be turning this shaft and it is not you can tell that shaft is not turning so <clears throat> i wanted to put this in the video though because i was trying to find information online about it and did not find a whole lot so this is the first piece we had to take off uh i believe these are five eighths bolts right here three five eighths bolts you back this spring off that's what holds your inner shib the pressure on your inner shib so um that spring goes up against here pushes on this and holds the pressure for your belt for the inner shib so um that's a keeps your belt tight up against the ship so Three bolts take the spring, this outer plate off. You back them off slowly, um, each one slowly to let the, cause this is about down here when it's tight. So you take that off, pull that cage, three bolts and this cap off and the spring. Then you have this piece right here. Um, take those six bolts off, get back this plate off and that allows you to pull the outer shift that is pretty easy and pretty self-explanatory then we get to the inner ship um and again this is different from a 50 series to an s series so again why i'm doing this because i couldn't find much information about it so there's a double uh double set screw in the center on the one side and i guess they do a double a double uh set screw to kind of like a act like a lock nut so there's two don't if you're, if you're ever tearing one of these apart don't leave the one in there you're not ever going to get it off so anyways um two set screws got those out and then there's a roll pin on the other side as well so it's out i just shoved it back in that's the hole it came out of and that is where i pounded it out of so that is where i'll pound it back in so now the problem is i need a puller to be able to pull this off and i do have a service manual at least and it says well hopefully everybody is okay involved Anyways, I do have a service manual, um, and it says you have to use a puller to pull this off. So I got a next step is going to be I have to acquire a puller to be able to pull this off. As they say, this is on there um, from the factory. Very, very tight. All right, guys. So we got the reverser case out, inner and outer shivs. Um, got it taken apart a little bit, and uh, we're replacing seals cleaning everything up and then we'll put it back together so just wanted to show you guys this kind of interesting um <laughs> what's one of the first things i do when i am tearing something apart i jump on youtube and find out as much about it as i can well i looked on youtube and there was nothing about a 50 series uh sds combine uh reverser or shiv variable shiv so i'm taking a video of it because that's what i do but also because I couldn't find something so maybe this will help somebody in the future so we got everything apart as far as we're going to we did not have to end up taking any of this apart other than pulling this shaft out um, with the gear so put a new seal here new seal here new seal on the back side of the outer shiv mainly because we're getting a lot of grease on the uh between the shivs and i don't i didn't want to get a get I didn't want to get grease on the belt. 
Did not replace this one, but again, those two seals just hold grease in the outer shiv. So I wasn't super concerned about that. Going to replace this seal on the back side of the reverser right there. And again, just replacing all the oil seals um, since we got it apart. So that way it does not leak um, going forward. So yeah, we're going to get everything cleaned up, replace the last couple pieces we got, and we'll get it put back in. This is what changes um, from forward to reverse. You have a cable that comes from the cab that moves this right here. And as you move that, this continuously spins one way, which spins the uh, gearbox. When that is thrown the other way, you keep spinning it the same way, but the gears turn the opposite. Now this shaft slides on. Gotta get the... I took this just a second ago. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that slides in and then uh, and then this plate goes on over top. like so. All right, so we got that plate on the uh, outside of the reverser on. We took it back off, siliconed it. Um, there was three little spacers I had to put in. Put that back on, tighten that down. And now we have the inner shiv on. So, uh, it actually pulled off really, really hard, but I cleaned up the shaft it goes on and I cleaned up the inner part of the inner shiv and uh, it actually went back on really nice. So the way this is held on to the shaft is there's a roll pin right here. You can see right there it goes through and this is where you drive it back out if you had to drive it back out, which I did when I took it off. And then uh, there's a double set screw with a ball on this side so that is how you get this off and how you make sure it does not come off though actually the ball was not in on this the two set screws came out but the ball never came out or sorry there was never a ball that came out so um, apparently somebody has been into this that has not been an issue for me but it has been an issue for a couple of other guys that I know that have these so anyways we got this back on got it secured I'm gonna take and clean this up with sandpaper as well um, clean it up nice and uh, nice and smooth and then we'll put the um, outer shiv on all right so we got this all cleaned up it is definitely not perfect but uh, a lot better than it was so we're gonna go ahead and put the outer shiv on now um, just so you guys know too I'm using like between the thousand and two thousand grit sandpaper I'm not using like a hundred or two hundred um, so if you're trying to clean a surface up for a seal or something like that you don't want to be using anything less than probably I'd say a thousand and most of the time it's anywhere I, at least what I use is probably 1500 to 2000 so just FYI all right we're gonna put the outer shiv on all right so we got the reverser gearbox back on I kind of just got got to working on it and uh, pulled it off without really showing how it came off so I wanted to uh, show you guys real quick so these two lines these two lines bolt on but then the, what holds this on is there's three bolts one two and three those are what actually hold the reverser gearbox and the uh shivs that run the head onto the combine and then one other thing hope you guys can see it that cable has to come off of the inside of the gearbox and that is what changes it from forward to reverse um, I seen these three bolts, got them taken off, and just could not get it in that cable underneath, which I should have realized, um, hooks to the foot pedal in the cab. That was what was holding it on. So if you ever had to pull one of these, it's those three bolts, the cable on the inside, 
and uh, and then it just pulls off of the shaft that goes across to the other side. So not too bad as long as you know what you have to do. All right, so we got the belt back on, tensioned, got it full of oil. Dipstick is right, well, kind of hard to tell, right there. Right there. Full oil. So I got the concaves out right now. I was looking at them. They're pretty war. We're going to run them for at least one more year because it's like $5,000 for a set of them. So uh, I just wanted to make sure they were all good to go other than they are worth some. And since I got them out, I'm going to put the inserts for wheat notes in as well. So I'm going to do that. This is the piece that holds the concaves in on the right-hand side. Um, I was going to re-weld it back up, but it's already been welded once, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was like $525, but this is a almost two-inch solid shaft, so there is some steel involved. So we're waiting on that piece. Once we get that, we'll get it back in, get these back in, and uh, we'll be good to go to start on wheat notes. Also, we're replacing that shaft because especially in wheat notes you can get those tolerances get very 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 thin and very 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 close and i don't want to take the chance that it'll be off and have the rotor hit the concave to be honest i don't know if that would happen it seems like it could it would be very easy to happen so i'm not going to take a chance we're going to replace it and uh make sure we're good to go so i'm actually heading home now to do a little weed eating and mowing as uh I've not been able to hardly do any of that at my house, so we're gonna go do some of that and hopefully we'll get the rest of the parts of the combine, get that back together so we can get our uh, oats off and a little bit of wheat. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.